From Ix Art Park in Charlottesville, Virginia, I'm Jovina. This is The Daily Creature. Thank you for being here. Friends, I'm wearing my marine biologist hat. Okay, to be true, I'm having a bad hair day. You're saying today's the bad hair day? But no, bad hair days circle quarantine like vultures circle carrion. It's just a fact. If we can accept the vultures, we can accept the bad hair days, right? And that's what hats are for. Plus, I'm invoking the great marine biologists, Cousteau, Zissou, etc. So it's fun. Okay, friends, as we exit Aquatic Week, we take a Friday nostalgic glance at where we've been. Big creatures, epic creatures. We talked about and made art in the name of sharks and octopus and dolphins. We hit hippopotamus, sea monsters. Where does it leave us? As we exit the ocean now, I see a tiny, strange little fish, just about the strangest fish I've ever seen. And he's, he's, he's somehow holding himself in the seagrass. He's swimming in the seagrass, swimming rather upright in the seagrass, holding himself seemingly with his tail. He's so tiny, he's so strange, and he's pregnant. And we'll get to that. But yes, friends, this day, we focus upon Hippocampus, the seahorse. I've created a larger-than-life model. This is bigger than your average seahorse would be. And uh, I fashioned him with some masking tape and some newsprint. I'm on a big newsprint and masking tape kick right now. I ran a wire armature straight through there like a backbone to help with that tail as well, lead up into the head, which is just a ball of paper. A little bit of cardboard for his, his formidable snout there. And uh, let's talk about the seahorse. I made this because I wanted to speak very clearly about this fish because its strangeness and its absolute charm cannot be denied. So uh, here he is, our seahorse. He swims upright. He swims vertically, already making him unlike most fish. How does he do it? Well, he has a dorsal fin. We remember the dorsal fin on the shark or the dolphin. You know, that back fin. Seahorse has one, too. And he's propelling himself through the water with that dorsal fin. He steers with pectoral fins, which in most fish and, and sea mammals appears that kind of fin as an arm sort of, sort of an affair. Uh, seahorse has his up on the head and he steers with those. He's steering with his, his strange head pectorals and he's, he's propelling with his dorsal. And should something push him along like the tide, he can grab on to sea plants you know, and hold on. Amazing, fascinating. This is called a prehensile tail. We see this in some monkeys, opossum. Uh, we even see it in chameleons. Speaking of chameleons, the type of chameleon I'm talking about with a prehensile tail can look in two directions at once. So can the seahorse. The eyes rotate within the socket. So a seahorse can look in front of herself and behind herself at the same time. Amazing. Hey, one other thing. Again, the male seahorse carries the babies and gives birth. The male gets pregnant, not the female. I like this seahorse. Surprises at every turn. Let's jump into art projects around this super special and very strange creature. Clay Aquarium, part five. The final part. Yes, Clayquarium, I am ready to be finished with you as projects go. No offense. And artists, please know that you should continue to work on your Clayquarium, regardless of the slight tip in attitude on mine. Uh, but as you can see, I've filled my space. There's quite a few creatures going on in here. Six creatures total, my three fish. Uh, we've got the octopus, the plesiosaur, and the hippopotamus, all made in earlier episodes from this week. So if you find yourself at a loss uh, regarding this segment, pop back to Monday, start from there, and you can see how this clay aquarium came to be. So this will be a quick one, friendos, but uh, I just want to take you through a couple of details. The first is a largely functional detail, and I'll do that one first because it's a little more boring, but... If you wanted to, say, put your clay aquarium aside for a while and preserve it, 
I recommend taking a piece of plastic wrap if you happen to stock such a thing in your habitat. And you can take the plastic wrap and even use a little tape if it clings nicely, that's helpful, and basically cover the exposed area of the box there for your clay aquarium. Tape it up now. If you can get it just right, it gets a nice, cool, glassy look to it. Um, but you want to get it nice and tight. But really, and I do, I like that. It's a bit like a real aquarium. Uh, but really, the reason to do this is to keep your oil-based clay from collecting dust, which it can do. Funny thing about the clay aquarium, and I will often reflect at the end of a project, and uh, if I could do it all again, if I could do it all over, I think it wouldn't be a clay aquarium at all. It would be a paper aquarium because I could have glued everything in, done it all in paper, and actually hung this up on the wall. As it stands, it won't really hang on the wall, but it can sit like this. And what I like is I can set it aside, and on a rainy day, and hey, those rainy days, they happen, um, I could pull it back out and we can do something different with it. So, fun stuff. Last little bit here, and uh, file this under looking for those little details you might have around the house. And this is really a wonderful detail that I discovered. I saw these and I thought, hey, perfect for the clay aquarium. So what I have here, don't roll, don't roll. Tiny shells, teeny tiny shells. We keep lots of teeny tiny things around. This particular teeny tiny thing comes from a dear craft making ancestor of mine. And wherever she is, I bet this makes her happy that this is being used. These are tiny shells. And they come from the Bahamas. Seashells from the seashore. I want to pop a few of these out. And you can see right away, friends and neighbors, that these will make a wonderful addition. I'm going to set the jar aside. I'm going to put the cork there because it's just so photogenic. And I'm going to pull these shells out a bit so we can see. And if you note the, the size of the shell versus my fingertips here, they are very, very tiny shells. They are, in fact, so cute. Let's get a little closer so you can really see them. Forgive the quality there. Look at that green one. Oh boy. I might save that green one for something else. So there, that's that. This is a nice little crowd of shells here. We'll pull that. Nice little crowd of shells that we can use on our clay aquarium floor in and amongst the rocks. But friends, again, do you have stuff like this? sitting around bits and bobs things that you perhaps picked up when you were visiting another country another place you were at the beach you were in vegas do you have fun stuff that you picked up as a tourist or traveler that now just sits in the house could be used in an art project just saying. Okay, here we go. Back with the clay aquarium. Final little detail, friends. I've said it before on this program. I'll say it again. Details are so important. I'm just going to get in there and start to pop these little shells in and amongst the rocks. As you know, or I believe you know, if you've been following along with the clay aquarium here, you'll know that it's clay down there at the bottom. We used clay to get all of these rocks in, and it works like a charm when it comes to these shells. And the shells are lovely. They provide a whole other texture amidst the rocks. Some extra shape, some extra color. The shells each have patterns that are far more complex in most cases than what we see on the rocks. 
I love it. I love everything about these tiny shells. So this just goes to show, friends, you may feel like you're at the end of a project and there's no other details to add. Once in a while, you have to stop and just say, ah, oh, what the shell? There's got to be something else I can add. And grab that thing and add it. Or not. These are your choices to make, artists. These are your choices to make. Say, say bye-bye, Clayquarium. We were talking about vultures earlier. Vultures are scavengers. There are lots of other animals that feed on carrion or things that have already been killed. Um, hyenas, jackals. Can you think of some other scavengers? This guy, crab, which fits into our week. Have you ever gone fishing? Have you ever gone crabbing? I went crabbing once a while back. And when I went to throw the crab trap, I wanted to throw it well. I wanted to throw it as far as I could because throwing isn't really my thing. I don't know if you could tell that already about me or not. Probably not. But throwing isn't really my thing. And I thought, let's really get a good throw. I was a younger uh, creature at the time. So I got a great throw, honestly, by all accounts, a good throw in the crab trap. But it went so far and I didn't watch the rope and the rope went into the water, too. So I was never able to retrieve any of the crabs I may have caught. Years later, I'm okay with it. And I like to think that that trap is a kind of a place where crabs come and go, they congregate, uh, they get together. They put on crab theater, you know? That's what I like to imagine. To be fair, I also do like the taste of crab meat. Do you eat fish? Do you ever think about where the fish that you eat comes from? Well, it's an interesting thought, isn't it? Hmm. Are you a carnivore? Are you an herbivore? Or are you an omnivore? Which would mean like a carnivore, you eat meat. But like an herbivore, you also eat vegetables. It's a mix. Not too much meat, etc. Things to think about. What we eat. Where we fall in the food chain that binds us all. Pop culture creature quiz, ladies and gentlemen. I am he as you are he as you are me and we are all together. It's a lyric contained in a song with a certain aquatic animal in its title. Do you know that aquatic animal? Do you know the song? Do you recognize the lyric? Can you, for extra credit, name the band that sang the song? Also an animal, a misspelled animal, but also an animal. Something to think about, friends. Something to follow up on. Clay seahorse. Yep, just a straightforward stand-up seahorse. Straight ahead sculpture here, folks. We're going to get down to basics. We've got some blue clay to work with. I've got that tiny shell I mentioned earlier. Let's do a little R&R. &R. That is research and reference. Let's jump right in with the discussion around seahorse parenting. Check this out. I'll go ahead and read it, but you can read along. Instead of the mother seahorse having babies inside her body, it is the male who carries them around. The female lays her eggs into a pouch on his belly. It takes just over a month for the babies to hatch. Then the wall of his pouch breaks and tiny, perfect miniatures of the parents swim out. And let me see a little miniature version here and here. That must be the proud papa. Fantastic. Very exciting stuff. This, among other things, makes the seahorse, of course, an incredibly unique creature. An incredibly unique member of the fish, the fish crew, the fish family. And... Uh, the previous reference I just showed you came from the DK Encyclopedia of Animals. Always fine stuff those folks at DK Publishing put out. This, of course, is the World Encyclopedia of Animals, which we've worked with earlier in the week. And uh, you have a number of seahorse cousins here as well. The sea dragon uh, is right here, the leafy sea dragon. 
Harlequin ghost pipefish. Gosh. And then here's your standard pipefish, your ringed pipefish. Uh, I can't speak to the lesser spiny eel. I'm not sure if he's quite in with these guys, but you'll notice with the pipefish, the sea dragon, and of course the seahorse, there's that snout. No teeth, friends. Just a, a, a snout, a tube through which the food is pulled. Tiny little creatures that the seahorse hunts for in and amongst the leaves and seagrasses that he or she lives in. So basic form, we've got the dorsal, the pectorals there. I'm going to use two colors to create the seahorse. And again, I'm going to work in a kind of a bluish color. And let's, let's remove the reference for now and get right in here and start with this. Okay. And we're going to take our hands and just soften up this blue clay. Softening the blue clay. And we're going to roll it into a kind of a little oval shape here to start something just like this. And let's come down a bit closer to our seahorse clay. And I'm going to take those pincher fingers and I'm going to break off just a bit of this lighter blue. I'm going to set it on the side and then I will employ these pinchers to get to work on the top of my seahorse here. And I'll start to pinch that neck, gently pinching that neck and that head as well. Taking your time and remembering to enjoy the process. Friends, as soon as you're ready, you may begin to pinch that tail for your seahorse as well. And I think right away, you know, we're starting to get there form-wise. A little kind of a belly. I like that little belly on the seahorse. But I do recommend that as you pinch your tail, you continue to pinch all the way down to create a kind of a point at the end. Fun fact, friends, if you were to take a cross section of a seahorse tail, which wouldn't be a very nice thing to do, but if you were, you would note that it's actually square. It's one of the few animals in the natural order of things with a square tail. Understand most, most creatures have a round tail cross section wise, but the seahorse, the tail is square. And uh, scientists have found that it it makes the tail better at gripping and holding strong holds on those plants. Apparently, it also makes the tail stronger up against, or under, I should say, large amounts of pressure. I don't know who's out there squeezing seahorse tails, but you better cut it out. Friends, pinch your fingers back at it, and I'm getting that snout going. And that snout kind of has a little... A little like a li little uh, blip to it like that, right? It kind of comes up there on the end. So I do a little extra pinching and press in on that neck a bit. And there we go. Now, I've got this, keeping that aside. The next thing I'd really like to do is get in here with this darker blue. And what I'm going to do with the darker blue is basically deal with a lot of the spines around here. I'm going to make them in a different color. Some of the details. And the way I'm going to get that look of those spines is by first adding little dots, little sort of blobs, small bits that I'm pinching off with my pincher fingers and running them down the back. And as it has been with many of our sculptures this week, I'm focused largely on one side of my seahorse. I'm imagining that the viewer really will see this side of the seahorse and I'm less worried about the other side, which also serves us in the sake of for the sake of time you should feel free to focus on building out both sides of your seahorse but what i'm doing here friends and neighbors is gently adding 
these little sort of blobs of the blue. And ultimately, I'm going to go in and pinch them to be a bit pointier. But I first would like to just get them somewhat integrated with, with the larger piece, stuck on there and ready for when I start pinching. And you know, if you choose to, you can go all the way down that tail. I may stop right there. And now I'm going to go in and kind of press that dark blue in and pinch it out a bit and create that little, you know, in some cases they have pretty long, almost like little spikes, almost like a horse's mane too, in some ways, you know. I get the horse thing. And what I'm doing as I pinch with those pincher fingers, I'm I'm not just creating that pointy bit, but I'm also, again, integrating or joining the darker blue to the lighter blue. So I really get those bits to to stay. And you know, the beauty of working with smaller lightweight sculpture is that you can really Lift it while you work, get in there, get those points going. You know, and they don't they don't all have to come to points. In some cases, they can just be bumps, little dots. But you see why there's a cousin called the the sea dragon. They were originally named by the Greeks as little sea monster horses, right? I believe campus means sea monster. Hippos, of course, we know means horse. Get a little more there. And friends, you're not dealing in rights or wrongs here. And remember, as artists, we always reserve the privilege to go ahead and say, you know what? I'm going to work with nature up until a point, and then I'm going to do my own thing. But I'm trying to stick with nature here. Friends, I'm going to grab a tool right now, and it's one of these coffee stirrers, which again should be pretty easy to, to pick up and find somewhere or another. I've got this little sort of wooden edge, that's the main thing, and I'm going to go in and just kind of gently touch it to my clay in a somewhat metered way. I'm sort of following following the 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 the, the spacing, I should say, of the the little spikes we have here. Gently kind of going in there and creating these sort of ridges that you often see with a seahorse and these are beautiful animals, and if you look closely, you will see that they're really complex little creatures visually. There's a lot going on, many, many details that you can get into. They have an exoskeleton, which means there's a, a sort of a bony skeleton on the outside, kind of like bugs often have. And this, I'm sure, is for protective measures. Friends, I'm taking this little extra bit of the light blue, I want to create the dorsal fin that goes on the back of my seahorse. I broke off, as you can see with my pincher fingers, a little piece about yay big. I roll it into a kind of a bean shape, pinch it flat. I'm not going to go too crazy with this piece. It's rather simple. I will give it some little extra kind of detail lines with my, my tool here, my stirrer. And I'm just going to really kind of stick it on the back like so. I'm going to downplay my little my little uh, spikes there in the back. And there's his dorsal fin. I'm going to hit him with a couple of super tiny bits. And really, actually, I'll just do the one. I'm not going to do the other one. I pinch flat. And yeah, why not add a couple of those little lines to be consistent with the dorsal. For his pectoral fin, which we learned goes up on the side of the face there. And I just kind of pressed it in. And hey, I think that'll work. Maybe a little smoothing there. Friends, I'm going to take a teeny bit of this lighter blue and I'm going to pop it into the eye here. And I'm going to really press that flat with the tip of my finger. And I'm not satisfied. I want a little bit more of that. I'm going to press a whole other piece of it 
and I'm going to go here. I really want to make sure I've got a decent size spot for the eye because that little green shell that I saved from earlier, I would like to use that little green shell as the eye. There's something about it that says to me, seahorse eye. So I'm going to set it right here gently and carefully. And I'm going to press it in a bit. And I'm just going to kind of bring the clay around a bit. I'm going to tilt that slightly. What do you think? I kind of like it. I think it works. I think it'll do until a real seahorse swims in, if you know what I mean. It'll do. But we promised a stand-up seahorse, so let's stand this seahorse up. So when it comes to standing our seahorse up, we're going to use a little circle of cardboard just like that. I popped that out of some cardboard packaging that came in the mail. I have a whole bunch of them. They're super cool. I've also taken a paper clip. You can recognize this paper clip. And I've just twisted it and readjusted it to create a kind of a wire armature upon which I can stand my seahorse. Fun stuff indeed. With a little bit of masking tape, good old masking tape, I'm going to grab a few pieces and essentially stick them onto the cardboard. And create a little stability because stability is exactly what we need in this situation. We're looking for a way to get that seahorse to stand vertically to almost look as if she's floating in the water, right? That's the idea. So, Strength and stability, so important. Next to strength and stability, we have the aesthetic, the look. So let's keep going with the look as well. I've got a little bit of this tan sort of clay, fairly nondescript sand color, and I'm going to take it and basically coat my cardboard with the tan clay. And, you know, go in there with my thumbs, spread it around and this will just further increase stability for our stand and to continue with our super cool look we can steal a few rocks they're in abundance here friends I know that you may not be sitting on tons of pebbles in your homes so what can you do to create rocks can you find them? Have you a yard, a nearby park that is safe to attend? Go find some rocks. You know what else? You know I love, 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 love those plastic plants. So I can grab a few of them here. And we can create, I'll take a little extra green clay that I happen to have left over here, and I'm going to create little, using my pincher fingers, breaking off a bit of the green, create little plants that I can pop in. And ideally, I'd like them to stick up as if they too are floating, swirling, and churning in the water churning the plant churn I don't know I don't know I'm working with a new angle here friends you may be able to tell we don't want things to get too flat around here so we're trying to do a bit more a bit more 3d does that make sense and ooh that's fun. You can see there's our stand. It's still there. 
I'm ready to grab this seahorse. Get her in there. So I think the safest bet is to run the wire kind of into the belly right here. And I might do so slightly behind the seahorse. Lifting the tail, I'm going to go in this way and down. And uh, I'm going to step back from it for a moment, which is always such an important thing to do in your work, ladies and germs. Don't forget to step back. I'm adjusting, adjusting here. I'm going to curl that tail a bit. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to step back. Let's bring in a few extra rocks just to to complete the picture and to mask those little bits of tape that I can see. And it's hard to walk away sometimes, friends, but once in a while, you just walk away. You call it a seahorse. And, uh, you know, the purple wire, I think the, the paper clip is masked enough. She appears to be sort of swimming right there. Friends, there you have it, a stand-up seahorse. <laughs> Hello, movie makers and dreamers of dreams. I've had such a great time celebrating the seahorse through creativity today with you. I love the seahorse. What a fantastic animal. It's a creature that reminds us of how strange and beautiful our world can be. Truly strange and beautiful. Fantastic. Folks, I recommend you keep up your celebration of the seahorse all day. Keep sculpting, keep drawing, keep building, keep thinking, tell some stories, etc. Hey, check this out. It's a braided candle. I found it. Now, I'm not going to use it as a candle, but I have an idea. Who am I? Hmm? A narwhal. 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 I'm a narwhal. Make a narwhal, right? And research the narwhal, the narwhal. The narwhal is like the unicorn of the sea, a very real animal, a whale, that has a big horn. I think it's a horn coming out of its head. Why don't you make a narwhal in addition to your seahorse celebrations? Look into the narwhal, and if you have a braided candle or something like it, start there. Start with a horn. Friends, I know what you're saying. Some of you are saying, Joe, you had this whole aquatic week, and you left out my favorite sea creature. How could you leave her out, Joe? To you I say, to thee I sing, in fact, just another Mermaid Monday. I've been wanting to sing a little more on the show, so there it is, friends. And yes, you heard it here and you heard it right. Next week is Mythical Creature Week and we kick it off with Mermaid Monday. All things mer, mer he, mer she, mer they. There will be mermen as well. Mermaid Monday. Join me for this. And again, the whole rest of the week, mythical creatures. It's going to be fantastic, strange, lovely, wonderful. Hope to see you. From Ixart Park in Charlottesville, Virginia, I'm Jovina. This is The Daily Creature. Listen to some bangles this weekend and stay creative. <laughs>